So today we, we will talk about uh, dose coefficients um, and what we'll do is uh, define what, what we mean by reference dose coefficient from the ICRP. Uh, we'll focus on dose coefficients for internal exposures from inhalation and ingestion uh, and then briefly talk about external exposures and some of the recent um, uh, task group work done within uh, committee two task groups and a new, newly formed one that focuses on environmental exposures. And then I'll just briefly talk about some future developments. So if we start with um, internal exposures, um, what is a dose coefficient? A dose coefficient, and this is for adult workers, but it's extended to the reference children uh, and pregnant female as well. A dose coefficient is defined as either the committed equivalent dose to an organ or tissue for activity intake. Uh, and we use uh, dose coefficients, we use small letters. So small h uh, is, is inferring a dose coefficient in the ICRP schema. Or the committed effective dose equivalent, small e, uh, where the argument is 50, uh, indicating a, a dose commitment over a 50-year period. Uh, for children exposures, obviously, that's, uh, uh, the integration is done until age 70. Uh, this is in, um, in the upcoming uh, updates to dose coefficients. You'll also hear the term dose per intake uh, coefficient, meaning the same thing. So what do you, what do you need to, to calculate these? You need three components. Uh, first is you need intake, uh, in, uh, ingestion or inhalation models. And, more, and equally important, for each radionuclide or each element, you need a systemic model. You need to understand the energies and, and uh, decay uh, data, the yields of various uh, forms of radiation. We've recently updated that in, IC in publication 107. Uh, and then you need a computational model of the, of the reference individual. Uh, and to perform radiation transport simulation, looking at simulations of uh, all kinds of radiations, uh, photons primarily, electrons. Uh, we used to not do electrons. We used to assume that uh, their energy deposition was local to the source organ. Now we actually follow them, which if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense if you go to smaller organs in the body and especially smaller organs in smaller children. Um, uh, the assumption of uh, unity absorbed fraction of the electron in the, in the source organ is, is, is no longer, but it's overly conservative. Um, uh, and, and even alpha particle transport, things like alpha particle transport in the skeleton, uh, the microscopic uh, uh, regions of the skeleton, that's important. For external exposures, uh, uh, a dose coefficient is, a, is the dose quantity of interest, the organ equivalent dose or the effective dose. Uh, normalized to a physically uh, measurable quantity uh, in, in case uh, either particle fluence, in a lot of cases you can't, uh, you don't measure fluence, you calculate fluence, or something measurable like an air kerma. Uh, and we can do, and ICRP has traditionally done this in uh, idealized fields uh, corresponding to occupational exposures. So we have the phantom re receiving monoenergetic uh, photons coming from the front, and that's AP irradiation, interior, posterior. Uh, radiation from the back, radiation from the left or right side, uh, rotational coming in from all directions but normal to the axis of the individual, or isotropic coming in from all, all directions. Um, and as you'll we'll see a little bit later, we've made a major update to this using the new ICRP uh, voxel reference phantoms adults. Um, a new endeavor, and then we'll talk about this toward the end, is looking at uh, environmental exposures. Uh, obviously, after Fukushima, this is particularly important, and ICRP is kind of committed to now doing reference uh, external dose co coefficients, but not for occupational fields, but for environmental fields. Uh, and obviously, there's a lot of opportunity to couple this to the, to the work of Committee 5 for environmental uh, reference animals and plants. So let's uh, go back, and, and so where did we come from in terms of internal dose coefficients? If you go back to Publication 30, yeah, they were pretty simplistic. <laughs> So uh, activity was inhaled or ingested, uh, reached blood, uh, the blood or body fluids, and we call that the, the transfer compartment. And then first order kinetics was uh, assumed uh, the activity at t equals zero was in the blood, and then would uh, arrive to various compartments. So each compartment could be a different organ, or you can have up to three compartments uh, modeling a single organ. So kinetically, it could be the sum of uh, three exponentials. And then the first order kinetics was used for uh, 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 decrease of that activity, either by radioactive decay in the organ or by biological elimination. And instead of coming back to blood and then being recirculated, we assumed it went uh, directly to excretion. Uh, so in this example for cesium-137, 
the whole body is the source, and we modeled it as simply two compartments uh, with uptake uh, at uh, t equals zero, uptake fractions of 10% and, and 90%. And then to look at the removal from these two compartments, we, we had to assign a biological half-life. In this case, we had two days for the first compartment with the 10% uptake and, and 110 days uh, for the second compartment. Adding the radioactive decay constant, then we get an effective uh, decay constant that can be applied. So then the activity in the total body as a function of time under this uh, uh, um, scheme was you look at the activity in the blood at t equals zero, essentially the uptake, uh, um, be differentiated from the intake. Uh, you partition uh, that activity to the two different compartments and then they, they uh, uh, change as a function of time simply by an exponential even minus lambda effective t. Uh, then to know the total number of transformations in each of those compartments, you integrate this over 50 years, in case for the adult, and you get the equation at the, at the bottom. Very, very simple. So really, you had to know how many compartments, what was the fractional uptake, and what was the biological half-life associated with, with some of these. And so this was, this was the basis for kinetic modeling in ICRP-30. Over the intervening years, uh, uh, starting in the late 1980s and into the, uh, into the 1990s, the committee, in this case, this was INDOS, um, uh, a, a task group of committee two, started developing more physiologically realistic, and th this will be explained in, in further detail by uh, Francois Paquet's uh, talk later today. Uh, and this is, again, this is going back to cesium, but now we see a much more physiologically realistic model uh, where you have activity in the blood going to the uh, trabecular and cortical surfaces and then varied over time and then recirculated back to blood. Uh, uh, three compartments representing all the soft tissues of the body, specific models for the liver, uh, and then the kidneys and the urinary excretion route. And then for each arrow, you have to define a kinetic parameter, what fraction of that compartment per unit time, in this case per day, is transferred to the receiving compartment. And in the, in the end, you get a long list of couple differential equations that have to be numerically solved. Uh, the solution of which is the time as a function of, act, uh, uh, the activity is a function of time in these various compartments. Then, then the trick is for each compartment, you have to marry that to actually an organ or a tissue represented in the computational phantom. So in some cases, th that's direct, the liver is uh, the liver in the phantom, right? Uh, in other cases, uh, you may have other tissues and you have to define or a blood source where in the computational phantom we don't model every single capillary, and so you have to make some assumptions in, the, in transferring what we model in the phantom to the, the, what is inferred in the kinetic model of the, of the biokinetic model. And this is an example of the numerical integration. So you set up this series of couple differential equations. You have a three terms. Essentially, you have the input, you know, uh, what activity is coming from other compartments into that organ compartment. Uh, you have the decrease of activity uh, due to either biological elimination or in situ decay. Uh, you could also have an additional, uh, so the third term is actually uh, progeny that are produced from decay of parents that were uh, entered into blood. And so it gets very, very complicated. And one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit uh, uh, perhaps later is uh, the pre previously we assumed that the daughter uh, progeny have the same biokinetics as the parent, and now that's no longer the case. And so if a radionuclide is produced in the body, it has its own, uh, so now, we, now we're dealing with multiple systemic models that have to be numerically integrated together. Um, just a quick point here. So in ICRP 103, we had the, the ICRP schema, but not a lot was said in that document on the terminology and the methodology of how internal doses are calculated. So this was an opportunity for committee two to further define in the context of the ICRP schema uh, some terms in, in try to unify some of the terminology used in, in the in internal dosimetry. If you, if you know uh, in nuclear medicine, that's internal dosimetry. Occupational inhalation and ingestion exposures, that's internal dosimetry. And so, over time, there was a divergence of the, of the terminology. ICRP had different terms for the, essentially the same parameters that the MERG committee in the Society of Nuclear Medicine used. And so this was an opportunity for us to harmonize those systems. Um, so currently, so now you have activity as a, as a function of time that's integrated and that becomes the time integrated activity, A tilde. <coughs> if you then divide by the initial activity at time t equals zero, 
you have uh, small a tilde, and that's the time integrated activity coefficient. You know, right? It's a per something, so it becomes a coefficient. In the Merg schema, that was what we used to be called the residence time, right? But now the Merg committee has now adopted the same terminology that the ICRP is using. So we're, we're in harmony between the, between the two um, areas of internal dosimetry. <coughs> okay, so now for equivalent dose, you simply sum over all the different radionuclides, all the source regions where those radionuclides reside in the body, uh, and then you calculate organ equivalent doses for the reference female and the reference male using what is called an S coefficient, and that is coming from radiation transport calculations in either the adult male phantom or the adult female phantom. So, it's, so there's a female S value, S coefficient, and a male S coefficient for every combination of source region and target region for all uh, radiation particles, monoenergetic photons, monoenergetic electrons, monoenergetic alpha particles. And so the S coefficient is simply the dose per decay, uh, is one way to think about it, multiplied by the total number of decays per intake gives you the dose coefficient in terms of organ equivalent dose. So, but now uh, you may be a little bit confused because I use this term R sub T, uh, target region. Well, in the ICRP system, we just use capital T, okay? Well, in a lot of cases, they're the same. The liver is one region. So R of T for the liver is the same as capital T for the liver. In some cases, I'll give you an example, the colon, well, we have a left right colon, a left colon, and a rectosigmal colon. So there's three colon target regions, but in the calculation of the effective dose, we only need the colon dose, right? So in that case, we have to go from target regions to what is called the, the, uh, the, the, the tissue, t capital T, needed for the effective dose. And so we have these fractional weights. In a lot of cases, for example, the liver, the fractional weight is one, because there's only one uh, target region. So in, in the upcoming IO, uh, OIR part one, and also um, an SAF document for the adults, uh, we provide the few cases where we've got multiple regions. So obviously we have the colon, lymphatic nodes. We have lymphatic nodes in different parts of the body, but in the end we need the dose to the whole composite of lymphatic nodes when we, when we calculate the remainder component of the effective dose. In the lung, we have different uh, tissue regions and, and also in the extrathoracic. So for the extrathoracic and the lung, uh, we use the apportionment factor. So that comes from the terminology used in ICRP 66. For the colon, we use the fractional masses of the, of the stem cell depths documented in ICRP publication 100. In lymphatic nodes, which really the ICRP has not, uh, only in a certain regions, uh, has, has provided reference masses. We've internally calculated reference masses consistent with data in ICRP publication 89. And then finally, we have the effective dose. And here we, we follow exactly the, the specifications in ICRP 103. We have the equivalent uh, organ doses for the male and female. We average and then apply the tissue weighting factor to give the effective dose. In this case, for, for internal exposure, is the committed effective dose equivalent. Um, okay, so let's go back to this, this S coefficient. Uh, in the Merton terminology, we used to call that the S value. Uh, we put a little W there because in this case we're not talking about absorbed dose, we're talking about equivalent dose, so because we have to incorporate the radiation weighting factor. And there we need the, the, the case scheme, so this is where publication 107 is extremely important. We have the energies and the yields, uh, and then they are summed, um, and then the, this phi is called the SAF, the specific absorbed fraction. It's an absorbed fraction, what fraction of emitted energy in the source uh, region is deposited in the target region divided by the mass of the, of the target region. And so that's the main uh, piece that comes from the radiation transport in, in, this, in this task group. Uh, and just a quick statement, occasionally we'll, we'll need, um, the biokinetic model will specify, okay, the radionuclide localizes in this organ, in this organ, in this organ, and then whatever's left over goes everywhere else. And so we have what is called the other tissues. Um, well, there's many, many combinations of what could be defined as other tissues, and so what, what the, uh, the task group and committee two have been, uh, have been doing now is doing what is called an additive method. We essentially numerically sum up the contributions for all these other target regions 
that collectively define in the biokinetic model what we call the other, other tissues. Uh, okay, so uh, specific absorbed fractions, where have they come from in the past for adults? Uh, going back to publication 30, they were actually documented in an appendix of uh, the, the publication 23. Uh, so this was early calculations. And this is where there was a lot of interaction between the MERD committee and the ICRP because, uh, because of the presence of Walter Snyder, chairman of the MERD committee and also chairman of the uh, reference man task group. Uh, and so that set of photons, and, and this was not electrons uh, or alpha particles, those were assumed to be locally deposited in the sources, but uh, early set of photon uh, absorbed fractions for self-dose and cross-dose were provided in the adult MERD phantom uh, as used in uh, publication 30. Subsequently for ICRP, they've heavily relied on calculations uh, for a series of stylized phantoms coming from Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And so there was a very famous Oak Ridge report that came out in 1987 that had photon, there again, restricted to photons, uh, specific absorbed fractions for monoenergetic photons, all source and target combinations across the ICRP reference series, including adult. And there again, these are hermaphrodites, right? So these are stylized phantoms with both male and female sex organs. Uh, and obviously now we've, we've got unique phantoms for both the male and the female. So the little bit of difference is there. So current uh, with ICRP 10, uh, uh, 103 and then the subsequent uh, publication of the reference adult male and female reference phantoms, uh, we have now completed a complete set of, and are finalizing it uh, as we speak, a set of a specific absorbed fractions for all particles, including neutrons, because we have to, we have to uh, occasionally uh, deal with a uh, radionuclide that's internally deposited that decays by spontaneous fission. Uh, so we did have to do some neutron uh, internal calculations. So neutrons, electrons, photons, and, and alpha particles. Um, and here's an example so that we have a document uh, that just finished a public con uh, comment on uh, uh, specific absorbed fractions for the ICRP adult male and female. So some of the challenges that we've been dealing with in the past couple of years, uh, and this is in the, the uh, task group 95, which is the, the what used to be INDOS and my task group 96, which used to be DOCAL. Uh, first time use of fractional values of electron absorbed fraction, right? So the one or zero has gone away and we treat them almost identical to, to, to photons. A discernment of wall sources. This, this was a, a little bit of a confusion to us. There's, there's the opportunity to have wall uh, sources in ICRP uh, publication 100. What that meant was mucosal sources, not total wall sources. And so we had some problems and we finally figured out, oh, we, we've got to calculate two, you know, total wall, which would be part of the, the um, other uh, kind of systemic activity. But if you had specifically wall deposition, if you read it carefully, that it indicated a mucosal source. So we had to do some additional calculations there. Integration of phantom SAFs with those derived from stylized models of the alimentary and respiratory tract. If you go back to publication 66 and 100, a lot of the airways and a lot of the areas of the GI tract, they're, they're not voxel models. They're actually stylized cylinders and things. And so for short range radiations and for stem cell targets, the resolution of the adult male and female phantom is insufficient. We, we, we can't model those, and so we have to resort to stylized models. And, and occasionally we'll have some issues of uh, essentially crossfire between a major organ like the liver and maybe the stem cell layer of the stomach wall. And so we had to make some, uh, uh, there, there was a lot of work to, to integrate those sets of uh, specific absorbed fractions. Uh, interpretation, uh, this was a major one. <laughs> If you read reference organ masses, do they include blood or not include blood? You would think that would be an easy question, but um, uh, the individuals that were dividing this, the phantoms, we, we thought our, our, our or marching orders, was, well, that's the mass that should be in the phantom. Well, if you, if you talk to people like Rich Leggett, um, there, was, there was some differences in interpretation, but uh, they thought that was just the parenchyma mass and not the, or the, the blood mass. And so we've had to kind of deal with that issue uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, computation of blood sources, an example of distributed organ. This is, this is uh, we, do, we don't model, um, we have some major vessels in the computational phantoms, but we, we don't have capillaries. And so uh, it, 
it, it, it, it is an issue that we're having to deal with in terms of the limitations of a computational phantom in a biokinetic model that says, okay, well, the activity's not in the tissue, it's in the blood, and how do, how do we do that? Uh, treatment of, of ingrowth of progeny with unique uh, biokinetics, essentially independent kinetics of, of daughters. And then first-time consideration of uh, dose coefficients, giving effective dose per bioassay contact, uh, content. So this is uh, using the data um, uh, to uh, essentially uh, estimate effective dose using a bioassay measurement or whole body count. Um, moving on to children. Uh, so um, a couple of years ago, ICRP uh, uh, made the decision to, to continue this adoption of, of voxel phantoms. And at the University of Florida, in conjunction with uh, Chunsik Lee at the National Cancer Institute, we've developed a series of ICRP-compatible reference uh, children. Uh, uh, th there's a male and a female, uh, newborn one year, five year, 10 year, and, and 15 year. Obviously, the, the 10 to newborn, uh, according to ICRP 89, or have identical organ masses, heights, and weights, but different sex organs, obviously. So we, we, we don't have hermaphroditic phantoms. We actually have separate male and female. Uh, and I'm very pleased to, to, to say that um, uh, thanks to the support of the Environmental Protection Agency, um, we have now completely finished uh, calculations of photon-specific absorbed fractions across this whole series. Um, these phantoms, uh, with some changes, were uh, uh, essentially, the, the, the phantoms that you're looking at here in this newer polygon mesh uh, NURPS format, uh, what ICRP will, will use and, and publish will be voxel phantoms. So they'll be identical in the computational format of the ICRP uh, uh, reference phantoms for males and uh, adult male and female. Uh, and so we've, we've made final changes to those in the, in the early part of this, this year. And then over the summer months, we have completed all the photon electron, uh, the photon transport within a month we should have all the electrons done. And so we're very pleased to report this. Uh, we'll need to do QA within the, so we're gonna distribute the phantoms to other uh, members of the task group and then do QA on this. And uh, our task groups are meeting in, um, in Japan in February and we're hoping to do a final review of the data uh, or as much as we can at that point. And I know this is, this is good news to C3 because of the radio pharmaceutical, they've been wanting from C2 uh, specific absorbed fractions for children. Uh, just a quick statement of electron absorbed fractions. Um, we're, we're trying a, a, a different thing here. So if you follow an electron uh, in a Monte Carlo radiation transport code, it will generate ionizations and excitations. And then of course you have radiative, uh, inelastic radiative losses generating X-ray photons. Uh, but the statistics are very poor in that uh, those are generally low energy, low in number, and for organs far away, the electron dose is really only the Remstrahlen dose. In the past, we've kind of ignored it, but if you think about it, that's not really consistent because we're spending so much time worrying about the low energy x-rays uh, 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 from radioactive decay, why not w worry equally about the, uh, the uh, Remstrahlen photons? And so what we're doing here is we've, we've finalized our photon SAFs, and then we do not one, but we do two electron transport calculations. In the first one, we follow the electrons in the source organ and calculate ionization and excitation, but we kill all the Bremstrahlen x-rays. So essentially, we have the, the specific absorbed fraction from the collisional component. We then go back and retransport, but we the goal there is we just tabulate the energies of the Bremstrahlen x-rays that are produced and then spectrum weight the photon SAFs that we've already spent so much time uh, smoothing and, 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 and doing QA on. And then we add them together. And so uh, this, was, um, this was an idea originally given to me by Keith Eckerman and we've, we've put it into practice. And, and in the end, you get very good uh, total uh, electron absorbed fractions, including the Bremstrahlen crossfire. Looking ahead, uh, we also have, uh, and, this, and I'll have to give credit to the European Union uh, solo project for this. So University of Florida was brought in to look at, uh, be part of subproject uh, project four on in utero cancer risks. And they needed estimates of the Tetra River population of the pregnant females, looking at uh, particularly radiostrontium dose to the developing embryo and fetus. So we developed a, a series of very detailed um, uh, anatomical models of the fetus and then the mothers and did uh, internal calculations. These are now available for the ICRP, moving ahead for updating of public documents. Uh, external dose coefficients, in the past we had ICRP 74, 
um, which was really a, a, co a collection of published dose coefficients from stylized and voxel phantoms. In 116, we completely did the, the calculations uh, um, ourselves in the task group with multiple Monte Carlo codes um, using the ICRP 110 phantoms. And as I said, there's a new task group, 90, uh, that's looking at uh, external dose coefficients, but for environmental sources, uh, a, uh, contaminated air, contaminated water, contaminated soil at different depths. And this is some uh, preliminary data uh, generated by our colleagues at JAEA in Japan using the, the ICRP uh, new pediatric voxel phantoms. So, so let me uh, 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 continue the, uh, uh, with, with just a brief statement of future efforts. And so, if you think about it, we, we've developed all these biokinetic models, all these computational phantoms for the radio, uh, radiological protection system for protect, uh, protective uh, and prospective uh, calculations. Those tools can be used for individual retrospective assessments. One of the options is to, st not, is to expand uh, reference phantoms to include a library of phantoms of different heights and weights. Uh, you can further refine external dose estimates. You can potentially re refine internal dose estimates. Um, the, the problem there is the biokinetic models. Uh, how do you individualize the biokinetic model? It gets pretty difficult. But uh, even then, if you use uh, uh, expanded library of phantoms to individualize dose estimates, you always need to, to, uh, to, to acknowledge that individual uh, estimates of cancer risk uh, are, are highly uncertain. So with that, I'll, I'll close. Thank you very much.